What's going on, y'all? It is Tuesday morning. One week to go. I keep saying that. I said one week yesterday. I'm saying one week today. Well, today marks one week until travel day. I treat travel day very differently. I say travel day is holy and sanctified and set apart. We don't mess with travel day. We like to have everything packed up the night before so that that way when we get up in the morning all we got to do is clean up a bit get the slides in hitch up lift up all the leveling jacks and drive away and we tell all of our friends we don't say goodbye on travel day because he's saying goodbye on travel day you risk running later getting out of there plus you risk getting yourself a little bit mixed up from all your routines of your daily not daily but all of your routines that you have set or you know how to hitch up, how to make sure everything's done right. If you're saying goodbye, you might miss a step. You, you just, you run a risk. So yeah, travel days for me are set apart, set aside. One week till travel day. Today is Tuesday, February 21st. Just drank me a delicious caffeinated beverage. Rockstar, what did I have today? Strawberry peach. I am a uh, caffeine junkie. Only if the caffeine is uh, without sugar. Uh, any of the energy drinks that come out, I like to try them. People are like, oh, those are terrible for you, whatever. I'm... Yeah, I tend to focus on trying to get the good stuff, but you know, I saw this one and I was like, ooh, strawberry peach, haven't had this one before. So, had that today. Get my, uh, get my groove going. Made eggs for everybody, checked in with work, seen what's going on, what needs to be done, what do we need to work on. Work is work. <laughs> uh, we do have another medical appointment today. This should hopefully be the last one, unless something emergency-wise comes up. It's the last one that's scheduled. And then uh, from there on out, it's gonna be, uh, you know, it's gonna be a lot of getting ready to go to storage. I'm looking up in the top of my pantry, seeing things that it's like, we carried that with us. There's a box up there that I kind of remember what's in there. And it's like, okay, we need to take that down, see what's in there, get it to storage or get rid of it if we don't need it. We just got to go through all this stuff. We got to get ready. We got to go. I am going to go outside. I need to measure my uh, wet dry vac, my shop vac, my little craftsman vacuum cleaner. The hose just rotted off. Just realized there was a bunch of uh, stuff written on the calendar there, and I was like, I better make sure that there's nothing sensitive for you to see on there. <laughs> that would be bad. Anyway, yeah, the, the hose just snapped. Uh, it's a cheap, small, maybe like two gallon little shop vac, but I, I think that's good for the RV life. I bought it after I had my first poopsie and I needed to have it clean up. It's been with us ever since, and I could really use it right now while I'm trying to deal with the shower that's stopped up, but the hose just broke, it snapped. I have tried going to multiple stores to find a replacement hose, but it's starting to look like, because I bought it at Lowe's, home improvement store, and it's starting to look like at $35 to buy a new one is cheaper than trying to get a hose that may or may not fit this one. I find that annoying, because then what happens to the old one? It just goes in the dumpster? How are we ever gonna make any kind of improvements to our environment if we're constantly just tossing appliances in the garbage? That's frustrating. I don't have a solution. I wish I did. I wish more companies would get away from this mentality of it's just make it cheaper to replace things and then throw them away and get back to a mentality of where we're more readily available to buy the replacement parts necessary so that we can minimize the amount of things we throw away. I was even thinking about that in relation to the RV industry. A lot of people will talk about they buy an RV and they immediately replace the tires or they wait until they regret not replacing the tires. They call them the China bomb tires. My thought process is why are we wasting resources buying terrible tires in the first place? If a company says they're environmentally conscious, why don't they just put the good tires on there in the first place so we don't have to go fill a landfall, landfall, a landfall, can't talk, a landfill with a bunch of bad tires. 
Wouldn't that make more sense? Wouldn't that be more environmentally conscious to put quality tires on in the first place? Of course, they would say, well, we'd have to raise the price of the RV too much. If the bad tire cost $80 and the good tire cost $150, don't jack up the cost of the RV by $5,000 only jack up the cost of the RV by the price difference of the more quality tire. I think the consumer would be more understanding of that. And you will help to reduce waste going into a giant landfill. Some of y'all may be annoyed by watching that. Uh, I don't like to get into politics and things of such nature, but I do, I like to logically think about things. And one of the things that I like to think about is how can we reduce waste? How can we cut down on what we put into a landfill? That just makes more sense to me. Anyway, that was a terrible rant. I'm sorry I went down that path. Let's go outside and take a look at the vacuum cleaner. I'm going to measure the opening to see if it's possible for me to purchase something off of Amazon that would be a suitable replacement hose because right now it's a confusing world. I need to find a way to measure that so I can see what fits in that hole right there. Is this some kind of adapter? No. So I need to measure that right there. be asking yourself, Dave, why haven't you uh, fixed your shower yet? I think the only way is going to be to remove this Hepbo trap. And then when I look at it, all the way back over there, look at the heater hose that's there. I look at all these hoses that are here. I'm going to have to probably crawl back through there just like I did with the heater. And then on top of that, it's going to be, I'll probably be laying on my back, maybe. Unless I can work my way right here, take this stuff out. I don't think I've really crawled through this side before. And then kind of lean sideways. It's going to be awkward all every which way you look. But we've also been really busy. So it's kind of one of those things. I get this little anxiety about getting in there. It's like I can do it. But my brain is going to the places of, I got places to go. I got things to do. It's tough to just crawl in there and just do it. I don't know. How do you deal with this kind of stuff? Do you just jump right in and fix it? This my hat's off to you if you do, if I wore a hat. <laughs> Occasionally I wear a hat. But yeah, it's it's almost crippling for me to think about that. It's like I need a whole day where there's nothing going on for me to handle this but I gotta get it done. It has to be done. Let's see what happens. So here we are, Amazon, $21. But that's just like, it looks like a broken hose. Doesn't have the, the solid tip at the end to go in there. This one says one and a quarter inch, but the end on it is two and a half inch. So it's as if you had a bigger vacuum and wanted a smaller hose like mine. I'm not real sure why you would want that. Got this one, $31, has a bunch of, I guess, tips you can kind of screw on there. Once again, almost the price of just buying a brand new hose. This one has like a special end right there. Looks like it screws onto something. Not really sure. What does that fit? I'm okay with four foot length. I don't need six feet. I don't need 20 foot. I saw one of them that was a 20 foot hose. I'm sure that's all for like wood shops, workshops. 
uh, car wash, car detailing. We're not uh, in that business. I don't need a whole lot. I just need enough to accomplish missions, accomplish cleanup type stuff that happens in an RV and needs a cleanup. Two and a quarter inch. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty lackluster. I kind of like this one. It looks like it's got a solid end on one end and then it's got the kind of curve on the other. That's a three foot long for $25. Compatible with Auric Buster B Compact Canister Vacuum Hose. Maybe I should be looking up my specific vacuum. So this is the Craftsman website. Craftsman is, you know, it's the brand that I got. It's Craftsman. Water hoses? No. So they have this one right here. It's another one where it's it fits the two and a half inch. So Craftsman themselves doesn't have anything to replace the hose on their specific brand. So you can understand my frustration. You, Craftsman makes this vacuum, which in reality, if you're a Craftsman fan, which I am, I, I go way back. I thought Sears was an awesome company. Sears created Craftsman and it has a long history of amazing products. But when the executive at Sears started to get financially in trouble, they started to sell off their brands. And we knew this was the coming of the end for Sears because they sold Craftsman to Black & Decker. So now Black & Decker is the manufacturer of Craftsman products. It doesn't necessarily mean that Craftsman has gone completely bad. But some of their business practices, I'm sure, have been adjusted. They've brought the Craftsman staff as well as designs and everything. All that now belongs to Black & Decker. So Black & Decker has the choice to make a good quality Craftsman product if they want to. But if they're in the habit of producing stuff slightly cheaper so you wind up having to replace the entire item, that sounds like a business practice of Black & Decker, perhaps? Craftsman, on the other hand, I don't know about, say, Craftsman vacuums, but back in the day, if you had a Craftsman ratchet set, and one of your ratchets, let's say your quarter-inch ratchet, got broke, it had a lifetime warranty. You could go into any Sears, show them your Craftsman ratchet, and they would give you a new one as a replacement. The chances and odds of that happening were so rare. The reason they could put that kind of a warranty on it was because they were selling you such a good quality product that the chances of you ever having to replace it were so slim. I don't know if they have any kind of warranties like that anymore. Something tells me it's a no. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not saying I, I need you to provide me a free hose. All I'm saying is sell me just the hose that I need. I think that would be the way to go. That way we only discard and lose what broke and all the rest of the parts can continue to function on as desired. Yeah, I guess it's it's, it's a gripe day. I'm sorry, I feel bad about that. We're, we're, we're going down the path of griping. Tell you what, no more griping. I'm gonna put the camera down, get the gripes out off the camera and get back to you with better stuff. How about that? All right. I think I found a resolution. I did a lot of research. I even stopped at Home Depot, which that was useless. And through using walmart.com, I was able to find what looked like the right hose. Uh, I backtracked back to Amazon using the data. What I found was, it's hard to see right there, but Stanley. Stanley Tools has the exact same vacuum cleaner. Same model and everything. I mean, that looks exactly like my Craftsman vac. Now, if you remember, I talked about Black & Decker owns Craftsman now. Black & Decker owns Stanley too. So it's all basically the same thing with different colors and different stickers on them. Uh, there was also another brand that I found that has a vacuum hose that looks like it will work and maybe even be a bit of an upgrade. Now the replacement hose cost me $27. 
and it should be the exact hose. The other one was $15, and I think it will work, but since it is pretty easy to do returns with Amazon, I decided to go ahead and order both of them. And the cool thing is that they will be here in two days. Originally, when I was looking at stuff through Lowe's.com, they couldn't get it to me until one week from now, which is our travel day, and that's just not gonna work. So, hopefully this will get to us on Thursday. I can test out both of the hoses, validate which one is the best option, and return the other one. It'd be nice if that $15 one would work because it actually looks like it could be an improvement over the original model. But if not, the $27 one should be an exact fit. Just kind of drives me nuts though, the amount of work and research. It's like you would think craftsman.com would just have a perfect fit. But now that they're under this umbrella organization, at any rate, water under the bridge. <laughs> Somebody is hungry and bored back here. Now she's hiding. Not bored. You're not bored, she's just hungry. We're waiting on mom to come out of her medical appointment. Hopefully that'll be real soon. I'm gonna eat the chair. Don't eat the chair. I'm gonna eat everything. Don't eat everything. So I want to give y'all just kind of a positive thing, a positive story that I heard today. Uh, we have a few of our friends, different families, that have gone through some stuff recently and the, the breadwinner of the family has lost their job and it was depressing and sad to think about all the efforts that went into them taking their families on these full-time journeys in the RV traveling the country. Well, one of those families I just learned got a job and they're ready to start working almost immediately back at another 100% remote job. So that is awesome sauce. I'm so happy for them. I, I won't say any names here. If they watch, they'll probably know exactly that I'm talking about them. So that is a positive note. I know this, this episode has been kind of negative, talking about vacuum cleaners, blah, 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 blah. So positive note. One of our friends out there, you know who you are, got a job, it's 100% remote, and gets to stay on the road. Yeah, I'm sure many of you that are watching this are wondering how can we do this? How can we afford this? It can be a little bit difficult. You know, you get yourself into the position where you're working a job that's 100% remote. And then the fear of losing that job kind of threatens the entire lifestyle. My thought process is if that were to happen to me, if I'm unable to get a remote position, the one positive thing in, in the role we're in is that I'm not limited to finding a job around where our house is because our house is on wheels. So if we can't do remote anymore, then uh, I could just take our home and go to another city or wherever the best job is at. But hopefully I could find another remote position. Kind of opens the doors when you're already doing it. So. The ding means that Tanya is done. Sweet. She is waiting for something to give to her doctor. All right. Touch back with you when we get uh, back home. All right, y'all. I did it. I did it. I did it. Yes, I did it. I got in there. I crawled in through the pass-through storage door by the wet bay. And let me say, that is more difficult for someone of my size than the other side, which is a bigger opening. That was rough, really rough. I didn't bring this nice camera with me. I had my phone, but I was in a convoluted, uncomfortable position. It was rough. Uh, I got it taken apart and then uh, I wanted Tanya to come out and bring me some paper towels so I could just kind of clean stuff up and yeah, it's pretty, I mean, it's it's disgusting looking. Uh, I tried to clean it up as much as I could before I showed it to you, but I did actually pull out my phone and just kind of, so you could see what this HEPVO, 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 H-E-P-V-O, they, they put the O as like a zero or a capital O, not sure why. But it comes apart in about four pieces. The white pipe, it's got black rubber gasket in the end. It's got a little plastic piece that, that kind of pushes down the inner part. The inner part's probably the most important. The silicone, I think it's a silicone. 
that reminds me of like a duck bill that kind of seals up like this and that's what prevents the sewer gases from coming back into your shower and then whenever the water just comes through it it just enough of the weight of the water just holds it open and then when the water passes it closes back up but it was definitely a lot of uh, hair was clogged in there so it was very good that I was able to take that apart I was debating having my neighbor Sam come over uh, if he watches this, sorry Sam, I, I figured I probably better figure this one out on my own because I'm not always going to have you around, buddy. But uh, yeah, I put it back in there, got the, the silicone back in, got the little plastic flap down on in there, uh, put the gasket on, and then I I was trying to, to look at it from both sides <laughs> to drop the little black rubber gasket off the back end and had to call Tanya back over to get that for me. Getting in and out is, is a lot of work. It's very tough. And I did not want to keep going in and out. I wanted to get it done. So I told Tanya, I said, I, probably, I had her film me like crawling further back to put it back in place. But I probably should have had her film me crawling out because it would have looked somewhere like Jim Carrey coming out of the backside of a rhinoceros. But before I did come out, I had Tani come up here. We turned on the shower, we ran it. I took the light and got closer and I looked for any beads of water to come build up on the top. Cause that would be pretty miserable to seal all this up. Have no idea that what I just did wasn't quite good enough. In tightening it down. So, but it looked good. And it's the water's draining out of the shower. So success. But I seriously, I haven't had a lot of anxiety about getting there and doing it. And, talking with y'all just getting that off my chest that helped me uh, overcome that fear so I was washing up my hands and I was on my way I was gonna go to the bathhouse and just really wash my hands hardcore hardcore and uh, Kira was out with her friends dad dad can we go swimming and I'm like you know what yes after that yes it's warm here I think it got up to 82 degrees and it's muggy Let's go swimming. We got a week left here. Let's go enjoy the pool before we take off. So I am going to leave you guys today. Oh, sorry, hit my arm on the TV. <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys today with us swimming. And take the GoPro with me and jump in the water. Splash. So remember, life happens. Don't let it stop you. Even tight spaces. Stay fresh, cheese bags.